Hey traders, happy Monday. Welcome to the Weekly Outlook. It is the week of November 25th through the 29th. Uh, we're going to have an abbreviated trading week this week with U.S. holiday. It is Turkey Day on Thursday the 28th, and I'm sure all retailers online and brick and mortar will be happy to see how Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday look to do with some retail shopping for the holidays as Black Friday and all that good stuff kicks off. So I uh, hope everyone has a great week. The market's probably going to be a little bit on the slow side, so let's take a look at the calendar and the charts and get right to it. Uh, if you're looking to follow me out there in the social media world, I can be found on all the major outlets, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, YouTube, Pulver.Chris on Instagram, PulverChris on Twitter, and just type in my name on Facebook and YouTube. Keep those comments coming in. If you want to get videos like this and notifications, just go ahead and click that subscribe and the bell icon on YouTube. All right, uh, we will go into the calendar for the week. This is high impact news. You can see that just like last week, a little bit on the lighter side. In fact, very light this week. We have no major news on Monday the 25th. Uh, all day bank holidays and most markets are slow, if not limited hours, or potentially even closed entirely on Thursday the 28th. You can again see no high impact news on Thursday and Monday. So what do we have going on this week? Well... To wrap up the month, which by the way, that is going to be the official end of November trading on Friday the 29th, November 30th is Saturday, that's the end of the month. Uh, usually holiday trading tends to offer some drifting, so I wouldn't really expect any massive movement. There's probably not going to be too many surprises out there as what is kind of already established with trends or breakouts or drifting will most likely continue through this week and even into the first week of December. Uh, I would like to think that over the next probably four weeks or so, uh, four to five weeks, we're expecting to see more holiday trading uh, with some continuations. We'll take a look and see where the stock market's at. We'll take a look at futures this morning and see where that's kind of projected to go for this week. Um, News-wise this week, again, pretty light on the calendar side. We have Aussie, Governor Lowe speaking. That's a RBA or Reserve Bank of Australia, Governor Lowe speaking. Uh, consumer confidence for the dollar, RBNZ, Governor Orr speaking on Let's see, Tuesday at 5 p.m., anything there? Hold a press conference on financial stability report in Wellington. Okay. Uh, Aussie construction work done. Chicago PMI, New Zealand business confidence. Aussie private capital expenditure. So we have some news out of Australia and New Zealand this week. Uh, nothing out of China, however, except for Friday at 8 p.m. when the retail markets will be closed uh, in the Forex side of things. But manufacturing PMI coming out of China. If there's anything that's happening that's good news between U.S. and China or any type of ne negotiations happening, uh, that could be a good sign. But like I said, I don't expect to see any major surprises this week. And uh, if there are, great, let's see them. Uh, otherwise, you know, we have some positions that are already in. Uh, I've got some robots doing some work for me, and I'll continue to get some participative trades in the market to wrap up this solid year. So I want to start things off with the dollar index and take a quick glance at futures. Wall Street's open as well. Uh, so we have futures on the rise. Uh, half of 1% one, one on Dow Jones futures. This is as of 10.45 a.m. Eastern time. So futures on the rise for all U.S. markets. Dow Jones futures, S&P futures, NASDAQ futures up. Gold is down to 14.50 an ounce. Look for some major support around 13.65 on gold. Uh, look for some major support around $15.50 on silver and oil continues to stay steady around the high 56 57 dollar area you can see it's creeping up towards 58 major 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 resistance around 60 dollars on oil uh, u.s markets are officially open and half one percent higher in the dow two-thirds one percent on the s p and nasdaq just over one percent so this is a holiday drift from the appearance and we'll see if that continues through this day this week um, you know, path of least resistance, as we've been saying now for the last couple of months, is bullish. Uh, let the melt-up continue until it all inevitably ends badly, but we need to be traders and position accordingly for that. But right now, don't fight it. Currency strength chart for the day thus far, as we started trading last night on Sunday, uh, Asia session kicks off with New Zealand dollar strength and yen weakness. Yen weakness has been sustained through the morning. New Zealand dollar had some early strength and has given it back to baseline. The pound making a sneaky little move through that London session open. There's 3 a.m. Eastern time, uh, 8 a.m. UK time, and there's the pound getting nice and strong through the morning. Uh, that's making up for a little bit of lost ground last week as the pound did sell off quite a bit. I'm not particularly interested in the pound pairs until December 12th and 13th. Uh, why? Because we have a big UK election coming up at that time. Uh, I will be looking to run some live sessions on the 12th and 13th. I think we're actually doing something the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Uh, but the election is all day on the 12th. 
and I'm looking for the aftermath. So between uh, the polls being open all day on the 12th and the polls closing on the 12th and what happens after, that's where I'm expecting to see most of the volatility. So it should be something that wakes up the pound, adds a little bit more volatility, even through a slower holiday market. Uh, we'll probably see some high volatility sneaking up out of those pound pairs. So be on the ready for trades like that. Uh, if you want to play it safe, don't trade the pound. If you want to get some short-term activity and some opportunity, trade the pound. Uh, the choice is yours. So let's get into the charts here. Uh, dollar index. It looks like the dollar index just continues to be sideways. Now, uh, it hasn't really given us any reason to think, oh, the dollar's going bullish again. In fact, I almost think that this is now setting up for a really nice head and shoulders pattern. So this may be a complicated neckline, but this is what I'm watching. Watch this area. Left shoulder, head to neckline. All of this, if this consolidates even further, this is still setting up for a neckline break. We could be going to the downside here sooner than later. I keep thinking about the catalyst here. What's ultimately going to drive the dollar lower? It could be impeachment. It could be uh, U.S. and China going well, having some market optimism, having the stock markets continue to rally should equal dollar weakness. Uh, in fact, nothing might happen, right? I mean, I, I'm prepared for this to still do nothing and play around with this neckline and play around with this consolidation, maybe come back and retest this high one more time, and then give us a confirmation to sell this break. Uh, but however it plays out, you know, the dollar should get weaker if you give it three months or six months. We should see a much weaker dollar. Of course, there's going to have to be some fundamental reason tied to it, more than likely to give it the proper you know, evidence and, and have it be backed up by all this momentum. But technically speaking, the dollar should drop. It's just a matter of, is it a clean break of the neckline to drop? Is it going to be a choppy, choppy neckline retesting highs again? Does it make a new high and then fall back down? Because that's a beautiful spot to sell it from at new highs. All sorts of reasons can set up technically, but they all, to me, they all point for a weaker dollar. So uh, right now, you know, if the dollar doesn't really give us much to work with, it's going to be scalping for anyone looking to be active. Or it's going to be patience and buy your time and look to sell high and look to sell high. And then eventually one of these sell trades should kick into a much bigger trend and we can ride out some bigger moves. I see Aussie dollar, Euro dollar, New Zealand dollar. Those are three of my favorites right now that I would, I would think that if the dollar gets weaker, Aussie dollar makes a great recovery. Euro dollar makes a great recovery and New Zealand dollar as well. Those are the three that I'm watching primarily. The pound. Get through the election on the 12th, the pound can move whatever way it wants. The dollar yen, it's tied to the stock market sentiment, it's going to move whatever way it wants. The dollar Swiss, it's tied to the euro. So if the euro dollar is going to be on the move, dollar Swiss will be on the move as well. All right, uh, oil really quickly before we get into the currency pairs. Oil is still creeping up towards the 60 to $61 resistance. Uh, we had quite the fake out last week. We had a nice convincing daily close out here. And then you see that the next day, big daily close to the upside. So what was bearish on one day was bullish the next day. And we are back into this channel. So it looks to be still in the mood for some bullishness. And most likely heading up towards the $60 to $61 resistance. From there, I'm sure that there are some willing sellers to hit resistance in oil. Uh, gold and silver, as I said, look at the big levels. Uh, gold 1365 is past resistance becoming future support. That is past resistance going all the way back to these highs in 2016 uh, as we made a break for it this year. We were buying this nice and low around 1200 and 1250, had a breakout to the upside above 1365, and enjoyed a nice run to the upside to 1500 plus. Now we're slowly starting to work our way back down towards 1365. There's trend line support there. There's past resistance becoming future support. I'd expect that to be a decent holding part for the bulls. Uh, let's go silver, XAG, USD. And same thing, I mean the correction, I might ex I might change this channel just a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Well, I think I had it right the first time, but let's just do this. Let's just keep this trend line in check. And past resistance, so we have a trend line drawn from these highs connecting this breakout area. I could probably tighten this up a little bit. So connecting those highs is what establishes this trend line. If I go a little bit lower, something like this perhaps, a little bit lower into this breakout, same area, but this gets us back into $15. So anywhere anywhere between you know $15.50 and $15 even, 
that would be the major support level on silver. Of course, it's not that far away from just coming back to retest the lows at 14. So between 15 and $14, major levels to buy low and just trade the range. If we go from 14 all the way up to 20 or 14 again, all the way back up to 19 or 20, play the range on silver. All right, let's get into our currency pairs. Let's go Aussie CAD. Aussie CAD daily chart. We're looking at a bullish head and shoulders, left shoulder, head to neckline. Let me draw that. So left shoulder, head to neckline, and this is the right shoulder area. So it could be a little bit noisier. We might come back into equal lows, make our way to the neckline. Hopefully we're gonna break this neckline and get to this outer trend line around 92.50 to 9300. This is where I'm looking to protect my buy trades to the upside. Aussie Swiss, I'll continue to hold this one uh, for a while. I mean, this is historical lows that I'm interested in holding off of. My positions are built off these lows, and I'm gonna hang on to it. Uh, I think right now, as it stands, I will probably end up taking some profit if we hit this 69.50 to 7,000 zone. If we come back and revisit the lows, I'll buy it again. Same thing, 69.50 to 7,000. If we start breaking this structure, now we're talking a much bigger move to the upside. But for right now, if this is low and slow and a big wedge that continues this way, then I'll wait. I'll be patient, I'll wait, but eventually this should be making a big move to the upside off of historical lows. That's the Aussie Swiss. Aussie Yen, looking for some chances to push up. Lots of indecision here in the last several days of trading. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of indecision after one bearish push. Uh, looks like there's a lot of inside candle trading going on right now, which means nothing. You know, it's just a lot of nothing. But uh, we are slightly on the right-hand side of the trend line. I did take a buy trade around 74.20. Uh, let me confirm that right here. Uh, Aussie Yen bought at 74.22. My stop area is where this red line is just below this low around 73.34. So I'm just staying patient for right now. But if we have a daily candle break and breach this low, so if a candle closes bearish and closes below these lows, then I'll take a small loss and I will stop fighting the Yen. However, I am looking for this low and this higher low and hopefully a higher low to form and allow this to carve out some new highs. The whole point of taking the trade was to look at a trade around 60, 70 pips of risk for about 180 pips of reward. So it's a decent and favorable reward to risk. That's the trade that I'm taking, but I'm not going to fight it. The one thing the yens can do is they can run and be really weird. Uh, this might come all the way back down to these crazy lows again before we jump back up. So I'm not going to fight it. If I lose, I lose. And we'll move on to find another trade. But stochastic-wise, we're looking pretty decent for this cycle low to hold. We have a lot of inside a uh, candle trading right now that hasn't broken bearish nor bullish, so I'm just kind of waiting to see if I can get the pop to the upside, get this trade back into profit, and hopefully make some new highs. Uh, I'd like to see a fifth wave. If this is one, two, three, four, five, if we have a fifth wave move to the upside, that would be great. Take some profit there, take some profit there, let this thing run. This is a two to one right here. If I hit my green line, that is a two to one reward to risk. If we Actually, it's like three to one, but if we go higher than that, even better let your profits run. So hopefully that's the case on the Aussie end, but we'll find out. Aussie New Zealand. Uh, one of my robots is hard at work on this currency pair, just starting to pick up some small buy trades for now, and that's pretty nice to me. Uh, this really is probably a repeat of what's been happening for the last year. We have push and correction, push and correction, push equal highs or double tops, and correction. So I am buying this right now. Now I've had some traders that sold it up here at the highs around 108.25 and 108.50 and they're making a lot of pips to the downside and they're enjoying this little run. That is fine. I did the same thing. I shorted it at an equal top, had some nice money to the downside, took some profit, then I started to accumulate some small buy positions as I did in this area, as I did in this area, and then I made a lot of profit to the upside. So I'm looking to do that again on this Aussie New Zealand. So if this is low and slow, let it go. If it's going to be low and slow to the downside, then let it fall back into 105. Let it fall back into 104. This area around 104.50 to 10400 is a great spot to look for a chance to jump to the upside again. So that is my plan in Aussie New Zealand is to ride this thing out and just wait on it a little bit longer. Aussie dollar, hopefully we will see uh, a meaningful pattern holding. Uh, we had our pivot cluster that was already hit, so that was profit at 69.21. Uh, we took profit off of this leg of Aussie dollar, off of this leg of Aussie dollar. We got filled back in again. I'm looking for a push to the upside. Again, 
dollar strength, maybe dollar sideways moving on the dollar index does not give us any strength on the Aussie dollar at this time. Maybe this isn't ready for the reversal pattern yet. Maybe this needs to come down one more time. Maybe there are stops, so many stops sitting right here that it's market comes down, taps the low, and then reverses off of that. So these blue levels are all small buy trades that I'm sitting in. This is tra uh, trade one that's entered. This was filled last week. Trade two, if it falls a little bit lower, is pending. Trade three is at the lows that is pending. If it goes just down to tap these levels, I will look for some indecision, look for some bullish decision from there, and see what follows. Hopefully, another move to the upside and a great big move to the upside breaking this year-long-plus channel. Crazy, right? High back in December 2018, year, year, year. All downtrend for now. Channely, but still downtrend behavior. So could it drop a little bit lower? Sure. It could drop a little bit lower, make another major divergence on the higher time frame, like the weekly and the monthly. And from there, put in a three-wave correction pattern to the upside, hopefully getting us back to 7,000 and upwards. Uh, let's see, what's next? CAD Swiss. CAD Swiss ended up getting some buy trades off the low. Um, this one, we'll see what happens. This could be a crown pattern to the downside. We're starting to push. If it breaks lower than 74.25 or so, this little area, if it breaks lower than that, I would love to see this CAD Swiss drop lower, and I will buy it like crazy. Uh, this is a pair that I'm not really selling. We sold it at the top here around 7,600. Made some nice profit there on the downside. Uh, that was a really good CAD week for us. We traded EuroCAD, DollarCAD, CAD Swiss, CAD Yen, pairs like that, and uh, got paid out really nicely during the week. Uh, but it's it's kind of sitting in no man's land. This is some intermediate support that it could bounce from. Uh, I currently do have a robot in that's buying off the lows, and it's holding about 60 or 70 pips of profit. But I'm just going to hang on to it. I want to take profit here at the highs around 7,600. If it goes any lower, my robot will still look to buy and still look to buy. And I'm just going to buy up some levels, hang on to some positive rollover trades, and take this higher. So I'm looking long on CAD Swiss, whether it takes time to develop this trade, that's fine. I've got all the time in the world on this trade. If it wants to come down to this low, this low, these lows in the future, then I will buy it, build a position, take it back up. You know, this could be a long, drawn-out structure for however long it needs to take, but to, and until... Uh, we eventually go much, much, much higher. I mean, ideally, uh, for the last several years, I've had my sights set on 8,000 on the CAD Swiss. And uh, I'm sure at some point in the near future, that will materialize. CAD Yen. This is another trade that we took a small entry on. Let's see here. This one, again, sideways movement inside of the uh, trend line break. We're at the lows. A lot of indecision candles on the daily chart. Where did I buy this last week? Uh, CAD Yen was a buy 8170, so 81.70. We're currently up about 7 pips. Nothing to celebrate. Uh, there's our low and the U-turn on the back side of the trend line around 81.27. That's my stop area, trying to go after another test of the high. So again, favorable reward to risk. Uh, I know that it's on the right-hand side of this trend line. We had support down here, support here, hopefully support here for another push to the upside. If it closes not just comes down to tests okay a test doesn't matter to me if it comes down and closes below this low then i'll close the trade and i'm not going to enjoy it because it's probably going to come back and test this area and then bounce but that's why i want to see the close of that candle because if it comes down to test this level and bounces with bullishness that's the sign that we're going up so it's all about the close of the candle for me on this cad yen and if it gives us a reason to stay in the trade we have a decent profit level sitting up higher. Uh, Swiss Yen is next. Swiss Yen, uh, just back to the 38% retracement zone and starting to push back up. This is a no trade. We have Swiss versus Yen, safe haven versus safe haven. I'd say this one you can just stay out of for right now. Uh, Euro Aussie, a lot of sideways movement happening on the Euro Aussie. Look for an equal high around 6,395 or 6,400. Resistance right there, resistance right there, and future resistance again. Look for an equal high around 6,400. So I'm looking to sell it. Uh, I do have a pending sell around 6,395. Looking to sell it right there and trying to take this back down towards 6,000. Uh, that is target number one for me uh, with a big head and shoulders pattern, that would be the neckline. So target number one is going to be the neckline. Anything that breaks lower than that, I will stay bearish and keep selling it down to a measured head and shoulders projection, which is going to be around 5,500 or so. EuroCAD. 
EuroCAD uh, pulled all the way back to where it started. This should be, I would think that after this breakout, we had resistance here, breaks above, coming back to retest. This should be future support for another push to the upside. Now it's probably not going to move in a straight line like I illustrated. It might be slow. Watch the resistance, break above, pull back, build off there, nice and slow, work its way up. I do see EuroCAD going higher towards 49.50 to 5,000. Uh, I'm looking to stay bullish on that one. If I'm bullish on EuroCAD, that means that CAD Swiss should drop. I'm not bearish on CAD Swiss, but I do think that's the direction we'll see in the short term. I am looking to buy the CAD Swiss at better prices. Meanwhile, I'm hoping to get some profit out of the EuroCAD to the upside. So there's more volatility on this one from, you know, if you're buying it around 46.60, you take it up to 5,000, that's 340 pips of opportunity where CAD Swiss is only looking to drop maybe 200 pips. So I'm just going to buy the CAD Swiss at lower levels, and this time on Euro Catalog to take this one north. Euro Swiss. Come on, Euro Swiss. We're hanging out here at 109.76. I'm still looking at bull, uh, bullish targets around 11100 and 11150. All of my positions on Euro Swiss were decently low, and I have been waiting patiently past support. Past support, looking for future resistance. There's nice little channel structure from this area, this area, just shy. I mean, just connect these highs and these lows. We should be able to see price get back to 11100 or 11150. Uh, if we have a drop further, if it does drop one more time, there's a French election gap around 10800 or 10700. I will buy it there and I'll still take it up to the same level. So I'm still going to remain a buyer on the Euro Swiss and I'll just wait it out. Euro pound, and a lot like the other pound pairs, probably not going to do much with them. Short term, we are seeing pound strength this morning. All that is to me technically is pushing the euro pound into these lows around 8,500. Uh, let me take this down a notch to make it not so thick. 8,500 major support on the euro pound. Uh, we'll see what this looks like because as we head lower, if we're disagreeing with momentum, this could be a spot where as we go into December, we start looking for some weakness in the pound to kick back in with this election coming up. So be careful on the structure. You're going to see a lot of these pound pairs, you know, just so much indecision that's been happening uh, as we head into the UK election in December. And as I've been telling traders, if you want to be safe and sound, don't trade the pounds. And uh, again, there, there could be some volatility and short-term opportunities, but that's going to be for the trader that wants to be in front of the computer, that wants to be trading, that wants to see what this election can create, uh, the, you know, possibly 11th, 12th, and 13th of December. Until then, I expect there to be day-to-day you know, very little volatility, maybe some movement, but it's just virtually untradeable in my opinion. It's not worth trading in my opinion right now. Next, Euro Yen. So Euro Yen. Euro Yen looking for some trend line support. Again, lots of indecision. So we have previous low, retesting, getting some trend line support, looking to see if we can bounce off this, you know, 119.50 to 120 area, hold support, push higher into 123. Euro New Zealand's. Euro New Zealand should be steadily going lower. Uh, we might have one more pullback though, which would be pretty nice if we had a pullback into you know 7,300, even back up here into 7,550 or 7,600. I would still sell this Euro or this uh, Euro New Zealand. I would love to sell it there to push lower. I would love to sell it here to push lower. Uh, I would really like to take this New Zealand or this Euro New Zealand down to 6,800 before I'm interested in buying it. So I'm pretty committed just to looking for sell opportunities on your New Zealand now. But once we get into 6,800 or lower, then I'll only be a buyer. And that is this structure right here. So low, low, low. So buying support around 69 to 6,800. But I think we can get there first, which means I am actively selling this resistance down to that support. And then we buy that low. So just stay with the structure on that Euro New Zealand. Euro dollar. Back down towards 1.10. So traders and I had a little bit of a discussion on this one of should we buy it? You know, should we buy it at 110? See if it wants to get up to 111.70. Glad that we didn't. Okay, it's right in the middle. Uh, we have a pending buy down here at 108.95, 10800. If it slides down to that level, that's a great spot to buy from. Uh, this could be a lot of noise. This could be a lot of noise right now, just as the dollar index is making a lot of noise and going sideways. This one might be doing the same thing. So we'll see if, you know, the, the euro or the dollar gets the upper hand. It's really going to be played out more with the, the dollar. If the dollar makes the move to the downside or the dollar index makes a move to the downside, then this euro dollar, of course, will go up. 
but we'll see what happens. If it's going to be sideways here, I might not even get a trade. You know, I'm not going to buy it here at 110 just think, well, it should go up. I'd rather buy it low at 108.50 or 108.95 where we have our pending buy. Buy it there. Take it up to the range high at 112. But buying it in the middle to justify this trade is not going to do anything. If it just goes sideways, there's nothing to do there. You know, especially in the holiday, there may be nothing. There may be nothing that moves this thing. So I'll just wait. I'll buy it low or we'll reassess the structure if it finally breaks above 112. So this one's off the list for right now unless we come down to 108.95. Uh, pound pairs. This will be easy. Pound pairs. Wait and be careful. Uh, we're back up to a spot where I'd like to sell the pound Aussie, but I'm not going to jump in and sell it. We may drift a little bit higher as we head into the UK election at 92, 9300. I still want to sell it, and that's the direction I'm looking for from a technical side. I think the pound will get weaker as these elections unfold, but volatility might be very high. Pound CAD also drifting higher. I'm looking for a rising wedge. We just haven't broken that trend line yet, so I'm waiting. Pound Swiss. This one has room to the upside as well. Are we going to break higher slowly? Are we going to break this high right now, go up here and bounce and keep going as we head into the election? Maybe. But if we hit 33 or 3,400, that to me is a big sell zone. So I think we might just have a little bit of a buildup on pound pairs if they start to break out. Again, trade at your own risk. Be cautious, but trade accordingly. You know, I would, I would, I would hold the pound pairs on tight leashes. I would not be scaling into them. I wouldn't be leveling in and calling these big, bold predictions because volatility could be uh, completely random in the first couple weeks of December as the election kicks off. Pound yen. We have a lot of sideways movement too. So pound yen. And, and you know pound, that pound Swiss that you're seeing right now on the chart may not even break. So it might look bullish today. Same thing here. Pound yen. Sideways, right? I mean, this is indecision. If it comes up to this yellow top, it could form indecision and sell right back down. This is about 150 pip range. Uh, about 180, 190 pips. So if you're looking in the short term, you can go down to a smaller time frame. Go to the one hour chart. Sell it high. If it comes back up here again, or around 140, 100, 140, 130, sell it high. Play the range, play the structure. Pound New Zealand. Bouncing off some lows. Here's the daily chart. Lots of indecision at the highs. I would love to sell this one as well, around 20400, 20400, 20405. We had a great spot over here to sell from. I know traders took that trade. It's an equal high from back over here. So equal high, double top. We're just not getting the follow through. Does it come back and retest it one more time? Does it come up higher than fall and drop lower? I don't know. I'm still expecting pound weakness to be uh, the aftermath of everything through the election. But one step at a time. Pound dollar. Pound dollar is coming off the lows around 28. It's been sideways since 28 to 3,000. If we break and go higher, there's room to 3,200 to 3,300. 3,000 is a big psychological hurdle for this currency pair, so watch for that to hold. If it breaks above, it's probably drifting up towards 32 to 3,300. So be prepared for that little uh, melt up on the pound. New Zealand CAD took some nice profit on this one last week. I'm still in. We're on this hopefully neckline pattern. Uh, whether this is a left shoulder head to neckline, if we're breaking the neckline, if we can just keep going. Looking at 86.50 as a target. That's a very conservative level with a lot of convergences between harmonics and support resistance and channel lows and channel highs. I think that's a very doable level for us to make some profit. I'm staying long on the Zealand CAD. If it pulls back again, I'll buy the lows and I'm still taking it to the same level. So I remain bullish on the New Zealand CAD. New Zealand Swiss, I remain bullish in this one as well. I like this. Come on, New Zealand Swiss. Get above this yellow box. Get above these previous highs. Let's go. Stretch this out a little bit further to the right. Respect the structure. Um, you know, maybe I need to put that box a little bit higher. We'll see. If it if it keeps, you know, staying above this level and the trajectory gets slightly higher, that's a great sign to still keep holding. Uh, we have lots of levels around 65 and 6600. Outer resistance around 66 and change. So I'd like to see this one go higher. If this New Zealand Swiss goes higher, that's also why I expect the Euro New Zealand to go lower. New Zealand Yen. New Zealand Yen is sideways for now. In a yellow box, nothing to do on that pair at this time. New Zealand Dollar. Come on, New Zealand Dollar. What are you doing? Hopefully we're going to break a neckline. So if this is a crown or head and shoulders, uh, we need one little push above 6,400. If we get, a, I'd say, a close above 6,450. We close above 6450. 
we should be on our way to make a run back to 6,600 or higher. Uh, if it comes back down, okay. Come back to equal lows, be a confusing right shoulder. Come back to equal lows down here, be a double bottom. I'm still going to be a buyer on the New Zealand dollar, just like I am on Aussie dollar. Dollar CAD. Dollar CAD heading up towards 33.50. That is where we expect to see some resistance. Resistance there, resistance there. Look for some resistance on the dollar CAD. Probably a spot to sell from around 33.50 if interested. Dollar Swiss. This one's pretty lame. Uh, a lot of sideways movement spot to sell high. It'd be nice to see the dollar start off this week on a uh, slippery foot. You know, this resistance on dollar Swiss sells off. Let's see if the dollar index can actually reflect that. So maybe we are at a level where the dollar does sell off a little bit. Dollar Swiss can reflect that, but it's still range bound, right? Resistance here, support there. Resistance here, support there. Resistance there, so on. So this stays within that yellow box for now, which means for me, I'm not really looking to do anything on it at this time. Dollar yen. Sideways, but still carving out higher lows and higher highs. I'm expecting this to be the other yen pairs too. Come on. Aussie yen, CAD yen, euro yen, let's go. Carve out some lows, let's go higher. I, I could see the dollar yen pushing back to 110, not necessarily because of the dollar, but because of the yen. Sentiment base, if the stock market is rallying, the yens should also be weaker, which means dollar yen goes up, Aussie yen goes up, CAD, or CAD yen goes up, euro yen goes up. That should be the tone, that should be the basket movement. Uh, we'll see if that's reflected. Other pairs, peso for example, dollar peso heading back higher. Still watching this one with a lot of structure. Um, we're kind of intermediate on all the major levels that I've been wanting to trade from. I want to buy it off of these lows. I want to sell it off of these highs. It's in the it's in the middle. So not really interested in doing anything on the peso at this time. The crone, uh, this is uh, USD, NOK, and Euro crone. Uh, this is the currency pair that remains bullish for right now, has been bullish since our breakout around July. I think this is going to be a great trade into 2020. Uh, we have a channel that was established back in March 2018. That's a year and a half long channel. Very slow fifth wave move to the upside. Yes, the fifth wave is still bullish. Yes, the fifth wave is still intact. But that means that when this fifth wave is done, we should see a one, two, three wave correction. And I think that that will give us a nice topping pattern that we can make a few thousand pips from on the crone. That goes for the dollar crone with the nice wave count and the euro crone which is sitting at uh, according to the evidence of the monthly chart it's sitting at a historical high around uh, 17 18 years of data so this trade i'm watching if we break this trend line trying to work this area maybe a double top and sell it down to the lows that's worth about three to four thousand pips right there so between dollar crone euro crone uh, might be a nice way to collect several thousand pips going into 2020 or kicking off 2020. Uh, one more quick look at the dollar, the dollar, <laughs> the US dollar, dollar index. Okay, just continues to play the sideways game for right now. This green line, I'll make this blue so you can see a little bit better. This blue line is my neckline, and that's why I have it labeled right here. This is my neckline. Necklines can be confusing because everybody can see this. Everybody sees this structure, right? So this is the neckline. There's no guarantee that we have this nailed in the next week. I mean, the neckline can take as long as it needs to. This might consolidate longer, 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 and then be a trade going into 2020 that the dollar finally gets weaker. Uh, it might be U.S. and China that have to work something out. It might be the stock market that just rallies relentlessly to the upside where the dollar gets weaker. But something will drive this down. It could be an impeachment. You know, there could be a lot of things. So we will see, all right? But as we approach this week, again, it's a holiday week. Uh, it's going to be a short week of trading, light news on the calendar. We have a few things out of Australia and New Zealand. Keep an eye on the data there, see what happens with the overall strength and weakness of the Aussie and the Kiwi. Uh, if the dollar stays stable, not a surprise. If the stock market stays stable, expect the Japanese yen to be weaker. So maybe that's where we get some of our short-term opportunities or some of our positions pay out this week, our Aussie yen, our Euro yen, our CAD yen positions like that uh, give us the weaker JPY that we can make some pips that way. And then we'll still be sitting on some of our positions for the Aussie New Zealand. And more than anything, have a great week. Uh, enjoy the time with friends and family. If you do some holiday shopping, hope you have some great deals. And if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out, leave me a like, leave me a message, send me uh, some comments and uh, have a great week. Everybody talk to you soon. Bye.